everybody this morning. Good morning, Pastor Jason. Yeah, I never said <laughs> Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Another beautiful day the Lord has made. Amen. Amen, amen. So I want to I wanna open up this morning by saying just one thing, and that's um, last week we were supposed to do birthdays, and nobody reminded me. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I just <laughs> uh, actually, I had it on my phone. I just skipped over it and forgot to do it. Let's do it this morning. All right. So this morning we're going to um, announce the birthdays for the month of June and then we'll sing happy birthdays to our brothers and sisters. So the first one is on June 6th, we have Shannon Fisher. Yeah. Happy birthday. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> June 7th, we have Auntie Sandra. Oh, happy birthday, Auntie. Sandra. Happy birthday. Uh, June 9th, we have Margaret Kincaid. Love Happy you, Auntie Margaret. Margaret. Also June 9th, we have Coral, Coral Smith. Happy Coral. birthday, Coral. On the 21st, we have Kaiulani Young. Happy oh. birthday. Oh. On the 24th, we have Ernie Baker. Happy birthday, Ernie. Ernie. Happy birthday, Ernie. On the 30th, we have two birthdays. We have Uncle Larry. Larry. Happy birthday, Happy Uncle Larry. Birthday. And we have Betsy. Happy birthday, Betsy. Yay, Betsy. <laughs> and that's Happy all the birthdays. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday. We love you, we love you, we love you. So, of course, we're here at church. We're going to read from the Word of God. We're going to open up in prayer. We're going to sing some songs. We're going to fellowship all in the name of the Lord this morning. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, where the Word says, And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory, are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Amen. So we have unveiled faces so that we can see the Lord, we can know the Lord. He lives in us, and we'll worship him this morning. If we can bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you as one family with grateful hearts, and we lift up our prayers to you this morning, Father. There will be many prayers lifted up to you. And we can rest assured in knowing that you hear our prayers, Father. This morning, in this time that you've set aside for us to worship you, we want to honor you. We want to glorify you. We want to bask in your presence and in your glory. And we want to feel the Holy Spirit just fill this place this morning, Father. We're so grateful for the, the gift of life, the breath of life. We're so thankful for the friends and family members that we have here in this church. But we're so thankful um, for you and your son that you sent to die on the cross so that we can have salvation in him. Amen. And this morning we want to praise you and honor you and worship you. We love you so much, Lord. We give you all the glory and the honor. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. Thank you, Pastor Jason. I think most of you are going to be familiar with the scripture verse that comes from Revelation in chapter 1. Everybody please say Revelation chapter 1. Ready to go? Chapter 1. Chapter one. That's right. And verse 7. If you're not familiar, you should have signed up for Pastor Jason's class on Revelation. Then you would know that um, Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 says, Behold, he comes riding on a cloud. Shining like the sun at the trumpet's calls, oh, lift your voice. It's the year of Jubilee, and out of Zion's hill, salvation come.
These are the days of Elijah Declaring the word of the Lord And these are the days of your servant Moses Righteousness being restored And these are the days of the trial Yeah a famine and darkness and sore. Still we are the voice in the desert. You cry. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. On a Zion Hills house. Sing it again. Behold, he comes, riding on a cloud, riding like the sun. At the trumpet's call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Riding Zion Hill, salvation. Come on. Now we're going to sing about Ezekiel. And these are the days of Ezekiel. Yeah. The dry bones becoming as flesh. These, these are the days of your servant David rebuilding a temple of rain. And these are the days of good harvest. The fields are as wide in the world. And we are the laborers in your vineyard declaring the word of the At the trumpet's call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee out of Zion's hills. Sing that chorus again. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee out of Zion's hills. Salvation come. Now you declare this, declare this to the Lord. There's no God like Jehovah. Uh, there's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. No, there's no God like Jehovah. 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 There's no God. Behold, he comes riding on a cloud, shining like the sun. At the trumpet's call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee. Out of Zion's hill, salvation. Out of Zion's hill. Out of Zion's hill, salvation. Come. Out of Zion's hill, salvation. Okay, plenty of harmony singers I can see. Lots of harmony singers over here. Lots of harmony singers right here in the middle. And plenty of harmony singers over there on the left. So choose your part. Every praise is to our God. Oh, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, oh, every praise to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God, oh glory, hallelujah to our God. Every praise and every praise to our God. Go up one. Every praise is to our God, oh every word of worship to our God. Every praise, every praise to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Oh, every hallelujah to our God. Every praise, every praise to our God. God my Savior, God my Savior, oh, God my healer, 
is my God, my deliverer. Declare it now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. He's my God, my healer. And my God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he sing one more time, God. Now, God, my Savior, my God, my healer, he's my God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Oh, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Oh, glory hallelujah unto our God. Every praise. Sing every praise. Uh, every praise. Every, sing every praise, every praise, every praise to our God. Oh, happy day, oh, happy day, oh, happy day, oh, happy day, when Jesus walked, oh, when Jesus walked, oh, when Jesus walked. He washed my sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. He taught me how to walk, fight and pray, fight and pray every day. That's why I live. Every day, every day, every way. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus walked. 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 He washed my sins away. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. We're going to change now. Every praise is to our God. Oh, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise to our God. Sing hallelujah. To our God, oh glory, hallelujah, to our God, every praise, every praise to our God. Sing about God my Savior now. God my Savior, he's my God, my healer, and my God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior, my God, God, my healer, God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Oh, every word of worship is one accord. Every praise, every praise to our God. Hallelujah to our God. Oh, glory. Hallelujah to our God. Every praise. Oh, every praise. Sing every, every praise and every praise. Here go. Every praise, every praise to our God. Every praise to our God. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you this beautiful place to worship. Uh, uh, uh. This is your house, Lord. Thank and you, Lord. Today we want to bless you because you always bless us. Yes. And so that's what we ask today, that you bless every heart that is here. You bless, uh, bless them in their homes, Lord, and 
and for healing we ask for those that need healing amen lord we come in in one accordance lord Thank in corporate you. worship to lift you up because you are king of kings king of the universe and our loving father and our savior yes lord we mention the name oh, of jesus Mahalo because Kepo. we know that name is powerful Mahalo, yes, lord and so we want to say the name of jesus bless your name every day every minute of the oh, day hallelujah lord we give you all the praise and all the glory yes, lord. in your name we play amen amen and amen and amen we said this before many times, but sometimes when we're praying, we don't know exactly what to pray or we don't know exactly how to formulate. And so this is always a good go-to. Pastor Jason has said that many times. Say the name of Jesus. Just say the name of Jesus say the name so precious there's no other name say the name say the name say the name say the name just say the name of Jesus just say the name of Jesus just say the name so precious there's no other name i know that can calm your fears and dry your tears and wipe away your pain when you don't know what else to pray when you can't say no words to say, just say the name. Just say the name of oh, Jesus. Just say the name of oh, Jesus. Oh, say the name so precious. There's no other name. Say the name. Say the name. Oh, gee, you just got to say the name. Jesus. Oh, we worship. Say. So precious. There's no other name I know. Thank you, Lord, that through every circumstance, every situation, if we take our eyes off the situation and focus on you, then you lead us, and you lead us in the, in the great way, you know, on a path better than the path that we had chosen for ourselves. We're grateful, Lord. You're a good God. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, I can lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Sing again, man. Because of who you are, I give you because of who you are, I give you praise. Because of who you are, 
I will lift my voice and say, Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Lord, I worship you because of who you are. Jehovah Tyra, my provider, the whole
There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you. That's the truth. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. I could search. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. I could search. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Thank you, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, if you just take the next few minutes to greet one another with the love of the Lord, don't be, uh, uh, don't forget the folks that are sitting on the lanai because they want to say hi too. And don't forget to see Chris when she comes with the iPad so you can say hi to all the people tuning in on Zoom. There is none like This morning, my lovely wife. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll begin. We'll begin. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So happy to see everyone. We've got some announcements for you this morning. I'm about to call my lovely wife up for, uh, the, for an announcement, but I do want to say next week, if you have forgotten, is Father's Day, and we will be celebrating, we will be celebrating with a potluck. And so, you know, like we said before, we, we used to do this all the time. We do potluck. We used to do it the first Sunday of every month, potluck. But we haven't in a while. But this Sunday will be potluck. So if you want to bring a dish to share, that would be awesome. An entree, a side dish, a dessert, whatever it may be. Uh, you don't have to bring a ton of it. But if you could bring so that we could all share. And then we'll fellowship and we'll share a meal and celebrate Father's Day next week. So just a friendly reminder um, if you want to bring a dish for potluck next Sunday, next Sunday is the day. Um, okay, that's it. Next announcement from my wife, Stacy. Good morning, New Hope Volcano. <laughs> okay, um, so ladies, our next meeting, I'm going to call it a meeting because it's not so much of a study as it is just a time of testimony and sharing, um, June 24th, 8 a.m. over Zoom. If you are not signed up with us and you want to, please let me know. If you're on Zoom, do we have Zoom today? Yep. If you're on Zoom, please let Chris know and I can get the information out to you. Also, not to scare you guys, but I just wanted to throw it out there that for our next six studies from July to December, we will be doing two books a month. I'm up in it. No, <laughs> I'm not really up in it because all the books from Hosea to Malachi are really short. Yeah. So we're going to be doing two books per month. We can do it. Um, but I don't want you guys to feel discouraged like, oh, I didn't do my two books. Uh, I can't come. Please come. Just come. Come to listen. Come to share. Come to just see everybody. Come to pray. Um, it's an awesome time for us to get together, deep dive into the Bible. I told my husband a joke because he's the joker in the family, but I was like, you know, I've been through like, um, how much books was it? 20, 20 books. I deep dived into 20 books of the old Testament. I'm like a scholar now. And he goes, oh, you made a joke. You're funny. <laughs> I was like, yeah, so no, but um, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to really deep dive and, and get revelation from the Lord, of course, but also from other sisters and just all the testimonies that come with the learning and the sharing. It's, it's absolutely beautiful. So I encourage you guys to come if you're not already coming. Um, and if you're not coming to a small group, uh, I just encourage you to be with the Lord every day. Rest in him. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
So it's it's so funny because they're going to start reading two books. And if you were here Wednesday night, we barely made it to the first chapter of John. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's awesome, love. Uh, our next announcement comes from our sister, Chris. Thank you, sister. Good morning. Oh, I'm so glad this microphone is working this morning. Praise the God. Yeah, we had to call in some extra help. Jamie came and made it work. So, and please continue to pray for our audiovisual system and team. Uh, Monday, people will be getting together to pray for you. So please put your prayers in the bowl back there, or you can pass them to any of us. Uh, Wednesday, Bible study, five o'clock. The Book of John. Thursday, hula, five o'clock, right here. Friday, celebrate recovery. Dinner at 5.30, large group at six. Uh, men's ministry this coming Saturday? Yes. Yes, June 17th at 9 a.m. Yep. Women's ministry, you, always heard, you heard, is always the last Saturday on Zoom only. Thrift Shop is always the first and third Saturdays from 9 to 12, and that will be this Saturday as well. Don't forget, um, there's a group from the church walking in the 4th of July parade. Woohoo! Um, even if you didn't sign up, I'm sure you can still join them. Like we were saying, people just come off the side of the road and walk in the parade, so <laughs> you could... Maybe uh, find one of those red, white, and blue hats. All right. I think that's everything. Um, we do have a virtual home at newhopevolcano.com. Also on Facebook, all you have to do is put in New Hope Volcano. Also on YouTube, you can watch the videos from the last two and a half years. Oh, maybe three years already. Yeah, lots of videos on there. Um, newhopevolcano.com as well. It's also videos on there. And if you want to know how to get into our Zoom or you want to help somebody get into Zoom, I just need your email address and you can register for our Zoom. All right. I think that's everything. Mahalo. Thank you, Chris. Yes. So, of course, I just want to follow up a couple of things. Thrift Shop is open the first and third Saturday, and that's why men's ministry is on the third Saturday so that your lovely wives can drop you off to the men's ministry and they can check out the thrift shop. But it will be at 9 a.m. We have some breakfast. We get into the word. We pray for one another. It's an awesome, awesome time. And Wednesday night as well. You know, uh, it was so funny because we just came out of the book of Isaiah. And I was thinking, man, that was a deep, heavy study. I mean, it took us six months to get through the book of Isaiah. And we decided we're going to move into the gospel now. And I thought it was going to be like a very simple, easy, loving uh, study. <laughs> But not with the guys we were with, man. They were deep diving, asking hard questions. And I'm like, I've never looked at John like this before, man. So if you want to join us Wednesday at 5, you know, we share a little bit of food. And then uh, fellowship time, we get deep into the word and prayer. And it's an awesome time. So that's Wednesdays. We'll be on chapter 2. I'm not sure if we'll make it out of chapter 2. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. So I think that's it for announcements for now. Uh, so we're about to collect the tithes and offerings. Two ways that you can give this morning if it's on your heart to give. The first way is you can go to the website, newhopevolcano.com, and you can uh, tap on the top of the homepage. It says Give Online, and you can give your tithe or your offering that way. If you're in the building and you want to give, we have an offering bowl in the back that you can drop your tithe or your offering off at any time. And, you know, sometimes we skim through this real quickly and we, you know, we, we pray over our tithes and offerings. But truly, I guess from the leadership team, I mean, we, we thank you and we thank God for your generosity because it's what keeps the lights on. It's what keeps the, the sound system going and the TVs. And so uh, it, it enables us to continue to spread the word of God. And so we thank you for your generosity. Now, that being said, we say all of that to say if you're visiting us for the first time, please, Hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too, please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And if this is your home church, we just ask that you please give with a cheerful heart. If we could bow our heads. 
Father God, we come before you this morning once again just so grateful and so thankful for all that you do in our lives, Father. We're so thankful and so grateful that we come here seeking to be in your presence, to be in fellowship with our brothers and sisters. But we thank you for knowing our hearts and for knowing what we need before we even ask, Lord. And we thank you for always being there for us in our times of need, that we know that whatever we're going through, we can turn to you for answers, for resources, for help, Lord. And this morning, we lift our tithes and our offerings up to you. We pray that you multiply it in abundance. We pray that you use it according to your will, Father, to continue the gospel message reaching out in this community. We thank you for this church building that we can safely come and gather. We thank you for the hearts that are here seeking you this morning, and I pray that you can touch each and every one in your own specific special way this morning. We love you, Lord. We give you all of the praise, the honor, and the glory. And we pray in your son Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. All right, let's switch it up. So, yeah, we've got a couple of fun things to look forward to. Father's Day, 4th of July. Very excited. Um, super grateful to be able to share the word of God with you this morning. I guess I wanted to start this morning... As you can see, we're going to be speaking about prayer and the lessons we can learn about prayer from our Lord and Savior, Jesus. But um, I heard a story of a man named Ronald once who was in need of prayer. And he came up to the pastor and asked the pastor to pray for him. And the pastor asked, what can I pray for you, Ronald? And Ronald said, I need you to pray for my hearing. And so the pastor put his hand on Ronald's head and he put a hand on his ear and he started praying. And after he finished praying, he looked at Ronald and he said, how is your hearing? And Ronald said, I'm not sure. It's not till Wednesday. <laughs> but prayer works, okay? Prayer works. So this morning we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna be speaking about prayer. Do you ever wish that you could be a better prayer, prayer? Well, I do yeah, all the time as well too. And to be honest with you, um, it has been an evolution for me the process of my prayer life because when I first started praying, I wasn't sure how to pray. And like Pastor Ray said, sometimes you just say the name of Jesus, and that's that's your entire prayer. But I remember going to lunch with Pastor Ray a couple of times when I first came to Christ. And we'd go and have lunch, and then he'd say, let's pray, right in the middle of the restaurant in front of everybody. And I, and I was like, oh, man, people are looking at us, Pastor Ray. <laughs> and uh, so we do that every time. We'd pray before we eat. And then after a few months or so that went by, he'd say, OK, now you pray. And I was like, oh, man. And so, so I started to pray. And then, you know, my prayer life started to grow and grow and grow. It started very, very small. And it grew up a little bit more and a little bit more. And then um, our dear brother, I don't see him, but our dear brother Robert, he came to this church and made it a mission to speak to me about my prayer life. <laughs> and I thought I was doing fine. But he, he shared a couple of things with me and he gave me a book to read and I started to seek out the Lord in a different way. I started to, to, to uh, pray to him in a different way. Without, without, I tried, I'll share with you. I'm, I'm getting a little off subject, but I'll share with you what he shared with me is that as I was praying, you know, I come up and I pray in the morning. I pray over tithes and offerings. I'll be praying a few more times today. And he shared with me that it was getting repetitive, you know, saying the same stuff. He said, I was saying, Father God, Father God, Father God, over and over and over again. And, um, you know, I wasn't offended by what he was saying. I was actually appreciative of what he was saying because it enabled me to slow down and to focus on what I was saying and what my heart was wanting to share with the Lord. And so, again, my prayer life grew up a little bit more and a little bit more. And so this morning, I just wanted to talk to you about your prayer life. You know, if, if it's something that right now it's in a small it's a small place right now. It can grow a little bit more, a little bit more. And what's so special is that this morning, we're going to uh, take from the example of our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. 
Because if you want to be close to God, you got to talk to him. You got to have a conversation with him. To be a better prayer, you have to <clears throat> spend quality time with him. Um, and so I know that I want to be close to him. And I'm sure because you're here that you want to do the same thing as well. So in the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 1, the word says, One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as uh, John taught his disciples, speaking of the, John the Baptist. And so the disciples watched Jesus pray, and they asked him, Lord, teach us to pray. And we're going to watch Jesus pray too. When did he pray? What did he pray? How did he pray? And we're going to ask the same question this morning. Lord, teach us to pray. And our goal is to become a better prayer, prayer, so that we can be closer to God. <laughs> prayer, yes. I mean, Jesus prayed, so if the sinless Son of God needs to pray, then I think you and I need to pray as well. So this morning, we're going to look at four lessons we can learn from Jesus about prayer. And the first one in your notes, number one, is that Jesus prayed a lot. Jesus prayed all the time. In the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 and 23, the word says, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd after he, oh, I'm sorry, he got into, he told them to get into the boat, go ahead to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. After he dismissed the crowd, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. So in Matthew chapter 14, we learn, uh, Jesus learns that John the Baptist had been beheaded. And he withdraws into a solitary place, presumably to grieve. But crowds somehow found out where he was and followed him. Now at that point, me personally, I would be like, give a brother some space, right? Let me be alone to grieve a little bit. Give me a break. But when Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion on them. He spoke to them and he healed their sick. And when evening came, his disciples said, time for a break. Let's send them away. Let's get some dinner and let's chill. And that comes from the new Jason translation, in case you were worried. <laughs> but Jesus said to them, feed them. Feed the people that were there. And of course, Jesus ended up using a young boy's sack lunch to feed over 5,000 people. Now, how many of you, after all this, think that you might be exhausted? So what does Jesus do next? He sends the disciples by boat across the lake. He dismisses to the crowd, and he goes up to the mountainside by himself to pray. Jesus emptied himself, he gave himself away to people, then he replenished himself alone in prayer. And we'll see this rhythm over and over again as we, uh, as we read the passages this morning. Stand before people, kneel before God. Give to people, receive from God. We're going to see that over and over. And there's a profound lesson to learn here. Solitude with God or getting alone to pray is one of the most powerful ways to refuel our sagging spirits. Jesus was in high demand. Everywhere he went, people pressed on and pressed in trying to speak to him, trying to listen to him, trying to receive from him. It had to be draining for him. Yet in the midst of a packed, intense, and demanding schedule, Jesus made time to be alone with his father. He made time for unrushed conversations with God. Without doing this, without spending time, without having unrushed conversations with God, we get depleted. We get worn out. We get overwhelmed, exhausted. And we feel far from God. God does this. God 
I'm sorry. Does this ever describe one of you? If it does, then we need to make time for God. I remember when uh, I was first becoming a Christian, and I would wake up, not when I first became a Christian, all of my life, I would wake up as soon as my eyes would open and I'm out of the bed and I'm brushing my teeth and doing all the things I need to do to get ready for work. Because no matter what time I worked, I always got up like a half an hour before work. <laughs> and so I would get out of bed and I would get ready and I would rush out the door and I would leave and I felt like it was a whole bunch of chaos ahead of me. I went to, to the restaurant to go work and it was just a day of madness. And then now, over the years, again, it's a, it's a growing process. I've learned that when I wake up, give those first few moments to God. Before I even get out of the bed, I open my eyes and I thank God for another day of life, the breath of life. And I go down my gratitude list. And I realize when I do that and I get out of bed, I have peace. And I don't feel so rushed. And I, and I can share with you that there's been times where I've had to get up and run out of the house. And I can tell the difference from when I give that time in the morning to, to I make that time to be with God as soon as I wake up, as opposed to just running out the door right into the world. So we don't find time for God. We make time for God. We don't squeeze God into our schedule. We build our schedule around God. If our relationship with God is truly the most important relationship in our lives, which it should be, then we got to give God our best. When am I at my best? Make some time there and build the rest of the schedule around it. We don't find time, we make time for unrushed conversations with God. A couple more examples of Jesus in prayer it takes place in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 35, in your notes as well. Very early in the morning while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Now when I read this scripture and I inserted it into the notes, and I read very early in the morning while it was still dark, what came to my mind first was my brother Happy because I get up early for work. I, I work at the school in the cafeteria, and I wake up at 4.30 in the morning. It's dark still. But by the time I open my eyes, I'm already getting a text message from Robert with a bunch of scriptures, sometimes prayer. I mean, I'm sorry, happy. I'm getting a text message from happy with scriptures and prayer. And it, it makes my heart feel so good because I can start my day by reading that, you know, and so I thought of you, Happy, when I read very early in the morning while it was still dark. I'm not sure who else is reading it at 4.30 in the morning, but I'm reading it at 4.30 in the morning. But here is that rhythm again. Give to people and receive from God. Jesus had been up late into the night teaching and healing people, yet he got up early in the morning while it was still dark and went off alone to pray. He made time for unrushed conversations with God. Again, Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16 in your notes. The word says, Yet the news about him spread all the more, so that crowds of people came to hear him and to be healed of their sicknesses. But Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Again, here's the rhythm. Give to people, receive from God. People crowd around Jesus. They want access to him. They want something from him. And he generously gives his time, his energy. He teaches. He heals. He feeds. Yet he often slips away to be alone, to pray. He makes time for that unrushed conversation with God. He empties himself for people and fills himself up with God. Now, if Jesus needs to do that, how much more do we? Make time for unrushed conversations with God. Whenever I do this, I always come away refreshed, filled, energized. The second lesson we learn about prayer from Jesus is number two in your notes. 
that Jesus prayed with gratitude. Whenever Jesus broke bread, he always prayed with gratitude and he thanked God for the food. You know, this is something we try to do with Isaiah all the time is that we try to teach him to pray with gratitude. I remember when he was little and we would pray before bread, bed, Stacy and I would take turns praying over him uh, before we went to sleep. And then after he got to be three, four years old, we say, hey, okay, you pray now. It's your turn to pray. And he'd say, I don't know what to pray. And so we just tell him, what are you thankful for? And he would start praying, you know. And it started off as a short little list. I'm thankful for my mom and dad. Amen. And then he added to that list. I'm thankful for our dog. I'm thankful for a house. I'm thankful for... And now all of a sudden, he's got like a hundred things on the list. The prayer is taking 20 minutes before he, he falls asleep sometimes in his prayer because he's thankful for his pillow, his blanket. He's thankful for his teddy bear. You know, he's going down the list. But we want him to have a thankful heart. We want him to go to God giving thanks for everything that he has. We don't want him um, to be ungrateful. We don't want him to be ungrateful. And so Christians through centuries have pray, prayed a prayer of thanksgiving over their meals. And this practice comes from Jesus' example when he fed the 5,000 in Galilee with that sack lunch. He gave thanks first. Mark chapter 6, verse 41, Jesus taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Later, when he feeds the 4,000 in Decapolis, he gave thanks first in Mark chapter 8 and verse 6. He told the crowd to sit down on the ground. When he had taken the seven loaves and given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people, and they did so. And at the last supper, the final meal he shared with his disciples, he gave thanks first. Mark chapter 14 verses 22 and 23. While they were eating, Jesus took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, once again, he gave it to them, and they all drank from him. Every time we see Jesus eating in the Bible, we see him praying first, pausing to give thanks for his provision. And Jesus taught us to pray, Give us this day our daily bread. He saw God as our Father uh, that we ask to provide and the one that we thank for those provisions. And here's a thought. What if every meal was a reminder of the goodness of God in your life? And so, uh, so we pray over every meal. You know, I remember when I was young, my dad would teach us as kids to pray. And I think I've shared with you before, my dad, he kind of grew up Southern Baptist. Uh, he wasn't practicing very much, so he tried to teach us a few things. I can maybe name uh, on my hand what he taught us about the, the Bible and about God. Don't, don't use God's name in vain. And he'd teach us to, to pray, and he taught us to pray. God is great, God is good, thank you for this food, amen. Right? But it became repetitive. It was just something that we would say. Or, uh, you know, rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, thanks, thanks God for this grub. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with those prayers, maybe except for the last one, if they were prayed from a truly grateful heart. Amen? But it's easy to reduce this to nothing more than a repetitive routine, a repetitive prayer. What if I was truly grateful and what if the meal reminded me of God's goodness in every area of my life and I prayed with gratitude? That would be something different, right? That would be a new way of doing things. Jesus not only prayed with gratitude over the meals, but at other times as well. And here's an example. The book of Luke chapter 10 and verse 21. The word says, At that time Jesus full of joy through the Holy Spirit said, I praise you, Father, Lord in heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the, from the wise and the learned and revealed them to little children. 
Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. So what can we learn from watching Jesus pray? That Jesus prayed with gratitude. And I want to pray, pray with gratitude. It's easy for prayer to turn into sanctified whining. How about that one? We constantly come to God with our hands out. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give I need, I need, I need. And what do you do with people like that in your life? You avoid them. And I don't want God to see me coming and take cover. I want to pray with gratitude. Now, just for clarity, I don't think God will avoid you or take cover when he sees you. It's good to ask for what you need. Jesus taught us to do that. But it's also good to be grateful for what you have. Jesus modeled that. And the Apostle Paul wrote in Philippians chapter 4 in your notes, verses 6 and 7, Don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That scripture is so deep. There's so much to take away from that. This morning, I, I want to take away the prayer and the thanksgiving from that. But you receive so much more. Present your requests. Tell God what you want, but do it with thanksgiving. Thank God for what you have. When was the last time you prayed with gratitude? When you, when you remembered all the goodness of God and simply thanked Him. Pray with gratitude. That's the second takeaway. The third lesson we learned from Jesus about prayer is number three in your notes, that Jesus prayed before every big moment. When you read the Gospels, you'll notice that Jesus is praying before every big event in his life. He seems to face every big moment on his knees. Jesus was praying at his baptism in Luke chapter 3, verses 21 and 22 where the word says, when all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And he was praying. And as he was praying, I'm sorry, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Jesus' baptism was the official start of his three-year ministry. And it was going to be a public event. And I don't think it was a coincidence that he was praying when the Holy Spirit descended upon him. And the Father spoke his blessing, You are my Son whom I love. With, with you I am well pleased. Jesus prayed all night before he chose the twelve apostles. Luke chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. One of those days, Jesus went out to the mountainside to pray, and he spent the night praying to God. When morning came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them whom he designated apostles. Isn't that neat? This was a big deal. Jesus knew he would be leaving his entire enterprise in the hands of of this small band of brothers. So he spent the entire night praying about who to call. Jesus prayed before uh, revealing who he was to the disciples. Luke chapter 9, verses 18 and 20. Once when Jesus was praying in private and his disciples were with him, he asked them, who do the crowds say I am? They replied, some say John the Baptist. Others say Elijah, and still others that one of the prophets of long ago has come back to life. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? And Peter answered, God's Messiah. This was another turning point. From this time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples what it meant to be God's Messiah. He explained that he must go to Jerusalem suffer and die and be raised from the dead. Notice that Jesus was praying 
before he asked the question that would change everything. Jesus was praying before the transfiguration. Luke chapter 9, verse 28 and 29. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up to the mountain to pray. While he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Jesus takes his inner circle up into the mountain to pray. And when they are there, they're given a glimpse of who he really is. And it's no coincidence that this unforgettable mountaintop experience happened while they were praying. Jesus prayed when he raised Lazarus from the dead. He prayed with his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane just before he went to the cross. And of course, Jesus prayed on the cross as he gave his life for us. What I want you to notice is that every big moment, every turning point, every important event, we find Jesus praying. Have you ever faced a really big moment and felt unprepared? Would you like to be ready for whatever life throws at you? Would you like to be ready for those big moments when they come? How did Jesus do it? There are two answers. First, when Jesus knew a big moment was coming, he got ready. He prayed first. When he knew he was going to choose the 12, he prayed. When he knew he was going to the cross, he prayed. He got ready for the big moments by praying first. You know, I remember, I mean, this, I'm sorry, this is taking me back to when Stacy, we found out she first got pregnant or hapai with Isaiah. And we were praying. It, it took some time for her to get pregnant because of complications that she has. That's why we only have Isaiah. We just have the one because he's a blessing. That's all that she could have. Um, but we prayed and we prayed every single day together, hand in hand. It, we would pray in the morning and we would pray as soon as we get to work in the car before we went into the restaurant, we would hold hands and we would pray. And I remember this so clearly because we would pray and, you know, we'd pray for her health and well-being. But I would always pray, Lord, please, if it's your will, bless me with a son. Please, Lord, bless me with a son. And, I, and we would pray that every day. And Stacy would pray that she doesn't care if it's a boy or a girl. And you know what she prayed for? I wish she was here so she could tell you. She prayed that, that the baby would look just like her. <laughs> I don't know why you guys are laughing. Uh, she didn't care if it was a boy or girl, but she wanted it to look like her. And man, that kid looks exactly like her. But I, <laughs> but I got my boy. I got my boy. But why that... that sticks out in my mind and on my heart so much is because we prayed so deeply and so heavily every single day. And, um, you know, it was a very complicated delivery because we had to fly to Honolulu. She went to Kapiolani and it was, it was, it was crazy, but what a blessing we got from that. And so that was a big moment in my life. That was a life changing moment in my life. And so, you know, I followed, I, I didn't know at the time I was following Jesus' example, but every day we prayed and we asked God, ask God for his presence, ask God for his power, ask God for his wisdom, ask God for his blessings, and um, how good he is. But for all of us, it could be an important conversation that we need to have with someone. It could be something happening with your family. It could be your job. You know, I know during COVID, there was a lot of prayers that were going up for... <laughs> a multitude of things. It could be a decision that you're facing that you know you, that will have huge consequences. Like our friend we spoke about in the beginning, Ronald, right? He had his hearing on Wednesday. <laughs> we get our heart ready. We pray first. It's what Jesus did. And second, because Jesus prayed often, 
He was ready for the big moments when they happen. And some of the big moments happen because he was praying. There will be lots of big moments that you can't predict, that you can't prepare for. But if you're praying regularly, you'll be ready. And some of those big moments will happen because you are praying. God will respond to your prayers and big things will happen. Jesus seemed to meet every big moment on his knees. He was praying. And I want to do the same thing. So when I know a big moment is coming, I want to pray first. Okay, so that's the third lesson. The fourth and final lesson in your notes that we can learn from Jesus about prayer is number four, that Jesus prayed for people. Jesus not only prayed for himself, but for others as well. Jesus prayed for children who were bought, brought to him. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 13, the word says, Then people brought little children to Jesus for him to place little children to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. Jesus welcomed the children and prayed for them. He prayed for the least of these. He prayed for Simon Peter at the Last Supper. Jesus predicts that Peter will fall away and deny him. Luke chapter 22, verse 32. The word uh, Jesus says, But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. What a powerful prayer. And boy, didn't that one come true. I have prayed for you, Simon. Obviously, Jesus prays for his disciples. I wonder if Simon found comfort in those words. Jesus clearly expected his prayer to be answered, for he told Simon that when he turned back, he should strengthen his brothers. He predicted Simon's fall, but he prayed and expected Simon to turn back. I have prayed for you, he said. Here are two take-homes from this, two takeaways. First, I should pray for people. If you only pray for yourself, well, that's not the Jesus thing to do, right? <laughs> of course, it's okay to pray for yourself. We all have needs, but you can't stop there, okay? Jesus prayed for people, and we should too. But who should you pray for? Well, you can start with your family your friends, those in need, the sick, the hurting, the hungry, the suffering, the lonely. We can pray for leaders, civic and spiritual. Timothy tells Timothy, I always call him Timothy. Timothy tells us to pray for kings and in all authority. And Paul often asks churches to pray for him in his ministry. So pray for spiritual leaders. You can pray for those far from God. Many of us have a love list, people who are not following Christ that we're praying for. I can tell you there's many in my family that I pray for all the time that haven't come to Christ, very close to me. Our mission is to help people find and follow Jesus. And that starts by praying for them. Who do you love? And who do you know that needs Jesus? Write their names down and pray for them every day. Pray for others. It's the Jesus thing to do. There's one more take home. If you could pick one person in all of the world to pray for you, who would you pick? Don't say Pastor Jason or Pastor Ray. That would be good. But here's who I would pick. I would pick Jesus. Jesus is always the right answer in church, right? <laughs> Wouldn't you want Jesus to pray for you? Well, here's the good news. He is. He is praying for you. Second, Jesus is praying for you right now. He's praying for you and for me. Romans chapter 8, verse 34. The word says, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God 
and is also interceding for us. Jesus is the, at the right hand of God, and what is he doing? He's interceding for us. He's praying for you. You're going to make it because Jesus is praying for you. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, the word says, Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Jesus will save you completely. He will finish what he started in you, and he always lives to intercede for you. You are going to make it because Jesus is praying for you. What's the most difficult thing you're facing right now? Listen to what Jesus says to you. I am praying for you. So we take Jesus' lead and we follow his example by praying often, praying with gratitude, praying through every big event in our lives, praying for other people. And by doing this, we become more Christ-like, which is God's will for each and every one of our lives. Amen? If we can bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you so much. We come before you this morning. We thank you so much, Father. We come before you with gratitude in our hearts. We thank you for your word, Lord. Your word that speaks to us. Your word that teaches us. Your word that is an example for our lives. We thank you for Jesus and the life he lived. That we can now try our best to replicate here on earth. And Father, I pray that each and every one of us can take a, take a lesson, take a note from Jesus, and that we can increase our prayer life, that we can make time for you, that we can set time aside to give you our best. And Father, I thank you for Jesus' example, Jesus example that we could dig into, that we could, we could um, learn from this morning, Father. And I pray that we can apply what we've learned this morning into our lives as we leave here today. Father, of course, our prayer is to be more like Jesus in each and every way. And the first way, the best way can be to pray like Jesus. Father, we thank you for the time that's been set aside. We thank you for allowing us to worship you, to allow us to sing to you, to praise you, to get into your word. I pray that your word dwells richly on our hearts, Lord. I pray that we can be more like the humble servant Jesus in everything that we do. Congregation, we've come to the point in the message where we want to offer the free gift of grace, the free gift of salvation that can only be found in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And so if you're here this morning or on Zoom and you do not have a relationship with Jesus, we want to change that, and I pray that you want to change that, and we can help you do that. <clears throat> We're going to say a prayer this morning, and I always like to preface it by saying, just because you say the words doesn't mean you're automatically saved. You have to say the words with a pure, true, and honest heart. You have to mean it. You want, have to want to have a relationship with Christ Jesus. And if that is you this morning, you are here seeking a relationship with him, I want you to say this prayer. This prayer will be asking Jesus to come into your life, to be the leader of your life. <clears throat> and I also want to ask those that are here that have a relationship with Christ to say the prayer as well, to, to help edify the body so that we can say it together so that no one is singled out or left out. <clears throat> so if you can, please repeat after me this morning. Heavenly Father, Thank you for Jesus. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I've done lots of things on my own. I have not always asked for your help or your advice. I want to change that now. This morning, I recognize you as my forgiver. And I want to follow you as my leader. Come into my life. And as best as I know how, for as long as I know how, I will follow you.
So now I say, so that you can hear me, so that I can hear me, so that my neighbor can hear me, and the devil can hear me. Jesus Christ is my Lord. I will follow him and him alone. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me first. Father, I thank you for those who have said that prayer for the first time. I pray that you make your face shine upon them, Father. Make your presence known uh, in their hearts, Lord. We thank you for the gospel message that we get to share with one another each and every Sunday. Father, your word says in Romans 10, 9, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. We thank you for that gift, that free gift of grace, Lord. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the time of fellowship we're about to have, the food. We thank you for providing the food for us. We pray that be nourishing to our minds and our body. We pray that you continue to be with us and let your Holy Spirit dwell amongst us, Father, as we spend this time loving on one another, praying for one another, sharing with one another. Father, we just want to continue to um, walk in your presence this day. We thank you for your leadership. We love you so much, Lord. We give you all of the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we pray in Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Congregation, if you can, I forgot one important thing, and that is that Pastor Ray is not feeling well, so he went home. He came in just like a, a soldier of God this morning. He came in and led our worship, but he had to leave early. So can we lift Pastor Ray up this morning? I'll pray for him. Father God, we lift Pastor Ray up to you this morning, and we thank you so much for his heart, his heart to serve, his heart to lead, Father, that although he's not feeling well, He's got a little bit of a cold. He's still come to help lead, lead the congregation in worship so that we can have a worship team to worship you this morning, Father. You are such a good, good Father, and we put him in your hands, and we pray for healing and recovery and rest and recuperation and peace in his life, Father. We pray for Auntie Lani as she takes care of him, Father. Help her to do whatever uh, she can to help Pastor Ray recover quickly. We thank you, Lord, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what that means for us is that we won't have a last song, so this concludes the service. <laughs> this concludes the service. If you want to join us for a time of fellowship, we have some food in the back prepared for you. Feel free to hang out and stick around and, and just fellowship with one another. Love you all so much. Have a blessed day and a blessed week. God bless you. God bless you.